For high performance riding, there's always been a debate between tubulars and clinches. Now, almost all pros use tubulars. Why? Is there some sort of performance benefit? Yeah. Now, before we go anywhere else, let's just clarify the situation. What actually is a tubular tyre? Well, it's one where the tyre gets sewn up, enclosing an inner tube, then the whole lot gets glued onto a tubular specific rim. Now, it's a very traditional method, and dare I say it, slightly archaic, perhaps. Now, clinches we're far more familiar with. It's basically a tyre that's held in place on the rim by pushing the hooked bead onto the inside of the rim. Yeah, now, just to throw another little twist into our equation. We're also going to compare tubeless tyres. Now, a tubeless tyre is very similar to a clincher, except that it doesn't have a tube in. What it relies on instead is a slightly different tyre with a slightly thicker bead and then a little bit of liquid sealant inside, which keeps the whole thing airtight. When we were pros, we pretty much exclusively ran tubular tyres. But since we've retired, we've happily run clinchers all the time, leading us to think, why do we really need tubs? So let's try and answer that question. Yeah, so our little experiment. We've got three pairs of identical Reynolds Assault SLG wheels. Now I say identical, obviously one pair of tubular, so they don't have any hooks on the rim to hold onto the tire. Well, looking at this quite clearly, Si, this is a disc, so they're not the same at all. Why on earth did we have a disc? I, uh, I wanted it a shiny pair of wheels to race cyclocross on this winter. So you're happily going to compromise our experiment just because you want a shiny pair of wheels for the winter. And, of course, Dan's the only one with a disc brake bike, so I've got to sit on Dan's bike. I'm sorry, Matt. I feel like I've let you down. Well, you have, but have a little think, but we'd better move on with the experiment, haven't we? Yeah. So what are the parameters, then, that affect tyre choice? Well, let's deal with weight first. So in this instance, our tubular wheel is 1,365 grams, compared to our clincher, which is 1,515 grams. No less impressive, but significantly heavier. But remember that this is a disc-specific wheel, and so this is 50 grams heavier just for the hub. So if we compared identical clincher and tubular wheels in this instance, then the tubular would be 200 grams lighter. But then what happens when we add tyres in the mix? Well, a tubular tyre is about 50 grams normally heavier than a clincher, but remember again, it's already got the inner tube inside, so it comes out lighter again. And when you add tubeless in the mix, well, tubeless and clinches tend to be broadly similar at the moment, so in that case, there's no weight penalty for running tubeless. So we can see that the tub or tubular as a whole is far lighter, and a bit of a feather in the cap for that, really. And that's the way that the pros use them. Now, tubeless give away just a few grams over clinches. But, arguably, what it feels like on the road is probably the most important thing of all. So, let's get on our bikes, Matt, and see if we can test it out. Do you want to go for the tubulars first? I'm on Dan's bike, aren't I? Yeah, like a monkey on a spud. I'll go for clinches. I absolutely love a good tubular tyre. Although I accept you don't actually need them to race, I think if you're serious about performance, then tubs really are the way to go. Yeah, first off, they are a lot lighter, but to me, it's just the way they feel on the road that makes the difference. I mean, on smooth tarmac, they almost sing to you, and they're so, so responsive. Although I must accept that the advantage of pumping them up to 180 PSI is now actually thought of as a disadvantage because tyres roll better at a slightly low pressure. But even with these, pumped up to 100 psi, they feel absolutely tremendous. I feel like I'm flying. Now, it's all very well having a posh set of tubular wheels for racing only. And don't get me wrong, I think saving 200 grams in weight is important. But the reality is that gluing tyres is incredibly laborious. And if you do get a puncture, it's also very expensive to replace your tyre. If you do try and fix it, then that's even more laborious than gluing it in the first place. So it's no wonder that pros love them, really. I mean, they never have to glue tubular tyres, so they probably think of them very fondly indeed. The reality is that clinchers are just so easy. But more than that, I think a really, really high-performance clincher tyre with a latex tube on a really nice 
set of carbon wheels is every bit as good. I honestly don't think I could tell the difference. Right, so I just... I'm not, I'm not entirely sure this is a good idea, Matt. Can you see? No. Good. That's what I'm to you. No, nope. I'm completely sure. I don't think I could tell the difference, except possibly if I'm accelerating really hard. No, even then, I don't think I can tell the difference. Now, there's no denying that when I made a video for GCM before about tubeless tyres, I was a little bit underwhelmed by their performance. They felt a little bit unresponsive out on the road, a little bit dead. But it's got to be said, since putting a different pair of tyres on a posh pair of carbon wheels, I'm starting to feel a little bit differently. There's still no denying the amazing puncture resistance, both from getting rid of an inner tube and therefore eliminating pinch flats, and also the sealant filling small holes as well. But it's the fact that the ride quality is significantly better. I'm not entirely sure they're on a par with tubulars, still the gold standard, but I think these are great. Also, these are a heck of a lot easier to put on than before. I could do it without tyre levers, no stress, no mess. Does this mean the time for tubulars is nigh? I don't think so. They still feel fantastic, despite the rolling resistance results, and they're the only tyre to choose if you're doing cyclocross, without a shadow of a doubt. And of course, if you're racing on the road, you've got the ability to ride on them before your team car gets up to you, and also, they'll get you to that key final three kilometres. Yeah, and what about tubeless then? Well, if you suffer from punctures a lot, then they're an absolute no-brainer, just a brilliant idea. My personal stance on them is actually softening as well, particularly with the new trend of wider tyres. If you run something like a 27mm or bigger, then tubeless are brilliant. A bigger tyre, at less pressure, rolls really well and is also incredibly comfortable. But more than that, they also open up new riding opportunities. So whether you've got a gravel, epic, all-road, sportif endurance bike or just a normal road bike, having a bigger tubeless tyre allows you to take the road less travelled whatever that might be for you. But there you go. But tubs, I think they're here to stay. There's, there's no doubt about that. And tubeless are going to get even more popular as people gravitate to wider tyres and wider rims. But I think still the tyre of choice is going to be a solid clincher wheel and a, and a tube and a decent tyre. I think it is. So go on then, Matt. Out of this selection of wheels, which are you going to take? Well, let's assume I was going to go back into racing, and without a shadow of a doubt, I'd use tubs. I've used them before, they feel fast, and for practical reasons that I've just described, they help you in some difficult situations regarding mechanicals. I think, even if I was racing, I'd use a clincher. I don't think anyone's going to glue my tyres on for me anymore, and a high-performance clincher we've seen has the measure of a tub. Tubeless, mm, I really, really want to go there, but for me at the minute, there just isn't the quantity of manufacturers getting on board the tubeless bandwagon, I don't have the choice that I would want to have in order to select the tyres that I want to ride. But eventually, I will ride tubeless tyres. Yeah. Now, if you want to know how to fit tubeless tyres, because it is slightly fiddly, or it can be, then we've got a video showing you exactly how to do that up there. Or, if you want to know how to glue tubular tyres on like a pro, that one was, was like me, I'm afraid, like a pro, you can click and get through to it just down there. And to subscribe to GCN, how about clicking on Dan's disc brake bike with a saddle too bit low. low are you going to leave that down and the wheels that you ordered basically for yourself for the cyclocross season yeah you know how much that's going to annoy him now that you've moved his seat i know and not I didn't, marked I didn't it. Mark it either did i <laughs> don't tell him we'll just leave it like that oh yeah it's fine that's yeah, going to be brilliant he won't watch. will you watch this yeah he will he probably will but, it, yeah. but we'll film his reaction when he gets back on yeah, it definitely that's going to be genius gold in case a bit whole video in itself i know dan lloyd throws his toys out of the pram like a pro so here we are on the tubeless tyres. Now I'm going to let you into a little bit of a secret. I've actually been riding these for the last couple of months. And the other little secret I'm going to let you in on is the fact that initially I didn't even realise I was riding on them. I thought I was riding on traditional clinches. It wasn't until I undid the locking ring because I thought it looked a bit useless and not very pro and all the milk started to leak out that I realised something was amiss. And the fact I was actually riding these and not clinches. <laughs>